Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and behind me is where we're building a 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. In order to address our tankage needs of water, diesel, waste, I want to maximize the space in the bilge area of the forward area of the boat. So I'm taking the time to make custom templates that will help our metal fabricator and our plastic fabricator get exactly what we want to fit the space. Obviously working in a boat there's no straight line so my first step was to create a flat area with the use of a sheet of plywood and some shims to have a nice level surface to build the base off of. The actual construction of the full-size templates just involves the use of some door skin plywood and a hot glue gun to get the shapes that we want. I used my protractor and a level to make sure we had things square or meeting the right angles and I took the time to cut the bevels and compound miters for the different aspects of the tank.
Once I was satisfied with the size, fit, and position of the template, I took the time to mark for some exterior flanges that will help secure the tank once in position. We'll also need to add some additional reinforcement to make sure the tank stays put, but these flanges will act as a nice robust connection to the boat. One of the beauties of boat building is that once you become bored with one task, there's always something else you can work on. So after finishing up in the bilge, I moved back out to the exterior of the boat to continue on our first layer of planking. The white oak I'm using for this first layer of planking really is great to work with. It bends very easily at this thickness. There's no need for steam or water. Just the use of some clamps and muscle gets it into position relatively easily.
Alright, so what we're doing here is we're installing some butt blocks where two planks meet in a butt joint. And this technique allows us to make long planks out of shorter lengths of wood. The butt block backs up the joint and it overlaps the plank above and below and three or four inches on either side of the joint. The use of bedding compound and wood preservative, of course, like we do everything, and then screws hold the assembly together. If you had really big boat with like really thick planking, two inch planking or something, you might have to bolt the butt blocks to the planking, but in our case, screws will work just fine. And I'm explaining this is because we get comments regularly from people who think uh, this is the final layer of planking, that this is what you're going to see when the boat is done. Why aren't we scarfing these joints together like some other uh, boat builders do? And that's because this is not the finished layer of um, visible planking on the boat. We're going to come back with two layers of 3 8 inch plywood, followed by fiberglass cloth and epoxy. And once that's all finished out, we'll have a nice smooth boat finish and you won't see these planks. So the use of a scarf joint is really unnecessary because the plywood is going to be here reinforcing all these joints. And the butt blocks we're using here ultimately are probably unnecessary as well because of the same reasons the plywood is going to reinforce this joint. However, I'm doing it to allow us to pull these two boards nice and flush together so down the road I don't have to worry about a lot of sanding or planing when I come back with our subsequent layers of plywood. They'll just lay smoothly to the substrate here. And I won't have to use as many of those metal washers uh, on the plywood to try to pull things tightly together. This just eases our operation down the road. However, it's a good technique to know if you're planning on building a wooden boat, you're not locked into having to scarf all your planks. Um, you can do a butt block, which has a long proven history and is very easy to do.
planking a boat like this certainly isn't rocket science, but I have found the most challenging part is where each plank meets the stem. And I've tried a few different methods of holding the planks in position to attach the screws with the use of clamps or a wedge, but now my preferred method is to pre-drill and use a screw with a large metal washer to hold that plank to the stem, and then bend it back towards the stern. I found that when you bend a plank from the stern going forward that you tend to get flat spots near the stem. By attaching the plank to the stem first and bending it back, you get a more natural fair curve. few more screws and holes to drill on our starboard side here. We've got to work around some of these clamps, but then we'll have three full rows complete over here. Now we'll do our few rows on this side and then we'll move over to the port side, do a few rows over there and alternate back and forth until the job is done. I've read that that equals out the forces on the hull, so that's how we'll proceed. As far as the process goes, I'm really enjoying this part of the project. Um, this is straight up woodworking stuff. You get this striking visual feedback every time a plank goes up. It's a great motivator to keep continuing on. Now, I'm sure that'll change down the road as this gets repetitive, but right now, I'm very much enjoying the process. Now, we still have some work to do in the bilge area for our tanks. I have another template that I want to make for another fabricator. I'm taking my time because I want to maximize that space in the bilge for our tankage needs, and I'm trying to avoid having any regrets later on the line, even though I probably will. So hopefully in the next episode, we'll finish up with those templates and actually move on to what goes into a custom fabrication for a vessel like this. Now we've received quite a few new patches for our salute to service wall and many of you know that I'm a retired policeman so we have a soft spot for those who have served or continue to serve and if you'd like to have a patch from your agency represented on our salute to service wall we would be honored to have it. Just send me an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com I'll give you our address and you can get that mailed out and we'll put it right up. Please check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown has been a big supporter of ours and we hope that our viewers will support companies that support the Sea Dreamer project. We hope folks will go check out our social media sites. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like those pages so you can follow along as we work in real time. You can go over to our website at www.seadreamerproject.com and learn about all the steps that we've taken to get to this point in the build. And of course, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.